I tried once again. So let's check if it works or not. Not looks like not. Okay, so uh -huh, uh -huh. hello everyone. This is Film Master Victor Nusproyev uh -huh. and uh, Film Master Nikolai Yordanov at chesslabs.com. We are going. To Just one technical issue left. Yes, uh, well, if you refresh uh, uh, our page, chestlands.com masterclass video, everything should work. Yeah, we cannot see the chat, but at least we can see uh, that the stream is working.
אוקיי. I know, I know how to deal with it. Just, uh, just a moment. Everything will be fixed soon. Uh, just to maybe if just one minute, and everything will be fixed. Just a moment, everything will be fixed soon. Uh, just to maybe. If okay, just guys. And everything will be fixed. Uh, yes, uh, just we are going to let everyone com comment. Uh, and we are going to add a chat into our um, uh, chestlance.com um, uh, page. Just a moment, so everything will be fixed. So don't worry. Uh, I'm very sorry for our technical issues. Uh, before that, we of course tested everything uh, twice uh, on Friday, but for some reason this time we experienced a problem and our stream started in the, with a different link. That's why it wasn't uploaded to the um, uh, to the web page where you where you were actually directed to. Yeah, everything should be good. So uh, let's uh, let me introduce myself. My name is uh, Fidemaster Viktor Nustroyev, and uh, this is Fidemaster Nikolai Yordanov from Bulgaria. Uh, today we are going to start a workshop. Nikolai will tell us how and when to attack. Uh, as I also ask him to uh, talk about his coaching experience, his um, uh, teaching methods, he is going to share some uh, basic principles that you may uh, follow when you uh, play your chess games. So, again, sorry for the delay, and uh, Nikolai, you're welcome. Hello, dear chess friends. I'm happy to, to see you. Today I will teach you how to attack the the king. My name is Nikolai Yordanov. I'm from Bulgaria. I'm very aggressive and attacking player. I have a big experience as a player, also as a coach. And if you have any questions, you can uh, type on the, the chat, if you can see the chat. Um, or you can, uh, if you have any questions, you can send email to support at chesslands.com. I think there is uh, another uh, link. Uh, my uh, my colleague uh, Victor Nostrov he will let you know. So, without losing any time, let's start with the first uh, game which I prepared for you, attacking the uh, the king by sacrificing a pawn. So. I think everything's fine now. C4, C5. We're not going to focus on the opening. By the way, the opening, uh, the opening it's uh, played very well, but we are not going to fo focus the opening. We're going to, to focus how to attack the king, how to create weaknesses against the king and how to win the game. Knight F3, Knight F6. D4, C takes on D4, Knight takes on D4, E5, Knight B5, D5, Bishop C5. Now we're sacrificing a pawn, E3, Castle, Knight, 5C3, E4. What you can see in that position that uh, we sacrifice the pawn, but we control the d3 square and also we have more space. You know that uh, you have to know that if you have a chance to sacrifice a pawn to take in order to take the initiative to have more space and to attack the opponent, you should always do it. You must do it. One pawn, it's nothing. 
Knight d2, attacking the pawn. Queen e7. Also, uh, rook e8 is possible. Queen e7. A3. The idea is b4. In that game, I played rook d8, but the move a5 is also possible to play against the opponent's idea. One of the best strategies when you play chess is to play against the opponent's idea. Rook d8, anyway, that move is also good. b4, bishop b6, knight c4, attacking our bishop. Of course, we play bishop c7. We want to save our pair of bishops. In the open positions, bishops are very powerful. In closed positions, knights are better than bishops. Rook a2. Now, bishop g4, attacking the queen and develop a minor piece with a tempo. My opponent played bishop e2. By the way, my opponent is one of the strongest international masters from Bulgaria. Bishop takes on e2, queen takes, uh, rook takes on e2, and now when we exchange the white square bishops, white has a very weak white squares. Knight c6. Of course, we have to finish our development. Before we start an attack, we have to include all pieces into the game. Rook d2, my opponent played rook d2. Knight e5. As you know, the best squares for the knights are in the center. My opponent played uh, knight b2. That move is not so good. It's better to take that knight. So, if the opponent has a strong piece, it's good to remove that piece from the, the, that strong square or to exchange that uh, strong piece. That's why knight takes only 5 was the best uh, move for white. Bishop takes only five, for example. I will show just a few moves to see what white uh, should play in that position. Rook a c8 attacking the knight. Knight e2. Bishop takes on b2. Rook takes on b2. Rook on d5. And that position is equal with chances for both sides. But let's go back to the game. My opponent played knight b2. That was a mistake. A6, interesting idea. We want to control the b5 square. Queen c2, attacking the e4 pawn. Knight g6, protecting the pawn. We don't want to give any chances for my opponent to create a counter attack. And now, rook d4, a mistake. Bishop e5. Attacking the rook, rook c4, and the most logical move in that position, we want to activate the last piece into the game, rook c8. Also, bishop takes on c3 was an interesting idea. Queen c3, knight d5, and then knight d5. With the idea queen g5, rook a c8, knight d3. In the game, I played rook a c8, also good move. Knight takes on e4. Rook takes, knight takes on f6, check. Queen takes, knight takes on c4, and now rook c8. Too many pieces are pinned in the, in the position, and uh, white will lose a piece. You know, pin is one of the basic tactics in chess. We have to use all possibilities for us at now b5. And uh, winning position for rook. black, c8. But let's see the, pieces. Um, the end of the game. Bishop d2. Rook takes on c4. Queen d3. And now 
what do you think was the best move here for, for black? Unfortunately, I don't see the chat and the comment. Probably I will ask uh, Victor to, to tell me how to see your comments. Or if it's not possible, I will continue with... Uh... Nikolai, yes, it's possible. You can find these uh, comments uh, um, in... Uh on uh, chestlands.com a masterclass video another uh, way to find it uh, on is on youtube uh, this is the link i messaged uh, uh, here uh, in uh, chat so uh, here... i think it's fine I, I think it's fine yes i i, I see i see in the comment uh, i see the the last comment is i still don't understand, understand a6, a6. Mm -hmm. is that is that correct yes that's correct okay perfect okay perfect uh we will go back to the to the move a6 and now my question is for you guys what do you play what's the best move for black in that position i'll give you two three minutes i'll give you a few minutes to to think and then I will show you the correct move. John says Bishop d6, queen e5. Okay, interesting idea. But is there any uh, better move? That position? What about Peter? Sorry if uh, Mark, if I don't spell your names correctly. Jirka says rook h4, okay. Bishop takes on h7, that move it's not possible. Probably bishop takes on h2. You mean uh, Henrik, probably you mean bishop takes on h2, check. Vin uh, Vincita, sorry if I don't spell your name. A name correctly. So the best move in that position is bishop takes on h2. We sacrifice a piece, typical sacrifice on h2, or if you're with white on h7, king takes 95. We're attacking the queen, and wherever my opponent put the queen, queen b1, check check and after g takes on f3 queen g5 rook h4 checkmate so that's the the line so i want to answer the question um vince uh, vincita asked me about the move that move a6 i'll go back just uh a little bit, just a second. A6. That move, the idea of that move is to control the b5 square and the move knight b5, it's not possible. So if uh, my opponent castle, for example, if my opponent castle, and if I want to play queen d6 with the idea, queen takes on h2, that move, knight b5, it's not possible. That's the idea of that move. Okay. Okay, guys. So if you have any questions about that uh, game, you can ask me. If you don't have any questions, I can continue with the second game. So... I wait for uh, 20 seconds, 20, 30 seconds. If I don't see any messages, I will continue with the second game. Uh, Nikolai, I have a question. If speaking about yes. the combination where you played bishop to h2, uh, 
was it possible to deliver a check on uh, h2 with the bishop then play queen h4 and uh, after that queen h4 then relocate the knight to g4 by playing knight e5 with a temper and then knight g4 would it work uh, it's it's uh, just a second so we can uh... and now knight g4. knight g4 uh -huh. knight g4 no, probably they Pro probably rook somewhere a rook somewhere or queen yeah. f2 Queen f2. Okay, I will play. Think. Uh, okay, let's go. Uh, let's check that line. If rook somewhere, check. And now, check. No, 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 no. I don't want to take the pawn on g2. I would like to use my other uh, my rook on c4. So let's play knight e3 because this move attacks the g2 pawn. So I'm threatening now with two mates: rook h4 and queen takes g2. Okay, that move it's also it interesting, but uh, my uh, my move it's uh, faster. yeah 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 your move is better. But uh, can we find a better move with the queen? What if they retreat not to b one but to a different uh, place after we play knight to e five? Here, probably queen uh, queen e two. Oh, no, oh no, I wanted. Well, you started with knight e five move. Yeah, actually, this is a better option. Yeah, I think uh, queen knight e5, queen, well, yes, queen e2 doesn't make sense, or, well, no, queen e2 doesn't make sense because it takes the square from the king. Yes, yes, so, well, if uh, if queen e2, we, we will play your, uh, your idea, knight g4. If queen b1, now knight f3, it's beautiful sacrifice yeah knight f3 is beautiful but knight g4 works as well okay yeah thank you okay so guys i will continue with the next game the next game is with the topic attacking the uncastled king attacking the uncastled king what you have to know about that um, that topic when you attack the uncastled king you have to keep the king in the center as long as possible. Also, you have to open files and diagonals and to activate a lot of pieces. And also when the king is in the center, there is no connection between the rooks and your opponent. It will be hard for your opponent to, uh, to organize the defense. So let's start with the second game again with uh, that uh, international master from Bulgaria. We're not going to focus on the opening, but I think that uh, the opening uh, I played well. I checked uh, with the computer. So 92, Parash variation in French defense, knight g3, knight f6, e5, knight e4. Knight e7 is the main line, but knight e4 is also possible. Bishop d3. Knight takes on d2. Bishop takes on d2. Now our position is better because we have three developed pieces against one. Knight b4. My opponent attacks the bishop on d3 and of course bishop e2 we want to save our pair of bishops pair of bishops are very important so we have to save that pair of bishops c5 c3 knight c6 castle queen b6 attacking the pawn on b2 and also my opponent wants to take the pawn on d4 and now What's the best move here for white? What do you think? I'm waiting for your comments. Um, Peter asked uh, what was the principle of in the game one. In the game one, in the game one, the principle 
this. The idea of the first game is that we sacrificed the bone, we take the we took the initiative, we had more space, and we had uh, more developed pieces. So if you have a if there is an option to sacrifice a pawn in order to take the initiative, you must do it. One pawn is nothing. So uh, let's go back to the second game. Vincita, c4 or b4, pawn, queen, c2, Henrik, bishop, e3. Any other ideas, my friends? He takes on c5. Okay. Okay, tricks of chess, c4. Okay, the best move in that line is he takes on c5. The topic of that game is attacking the uncastled king. When the king is uncastled, we have to open files and diagonals and to keep the, the king in the center. The opponent's king is in the center, so we open the position. Queen takes on b2. Queen a4. The idea of that move is to transfer the queen on the king side and to attack on the king side. Bishop takes on c5. Now, uh, black, they have a pawn up, but this is nothing. We want to attack. We want to win the game, giving a checkmate. We don't care about uh, one or two pawns. Rook b1, queen a3. And now, take a look at that position. Black wants to exchange the queens. What do you think? Is it good to exchange the queens? Or it's not good to exchange the queens. To exchange or not to exchange. I will give you one minute to think and I will tell you the best uh, move for white. So is it good when you attack the opponent to exchange the queens? No, of course, of course, Vincita. Exactly, queen g4. We have to avoid exchanging the queens. Queen g4. When we attack the opponent, every exchange is bad for us. So exchanging the queens, it's not good. Bishop f8, exactly. rook b3. We develop our rook with a tempo, and now you will see we will start a monster attack against the king. Queen c5, bishop e3. Step by step, we improve the position of our pieces. Queen a5, and also. You know, in the opening, it's not good to play with the heavy pieces, especially with the queen. You can see this is the move 16. And uh, my uh, my opponent, I think uh, he played uh, five or six moves with the queen, which is uh, not good for black. C4. We improve the position of our pieces and we try to open the position because the opponent's king is in the center. Queen a4. We cannot take the, the pawn on d5 because our queen is hanging. Queen a4, a4 with the idea knight g5 and to take on the f7, bishop e7. Queen g3. Now double attack. We want to take the pawn on g7 and to, 
to play c takes on d5. I think d takes on c4 is the best uh, move here. There are, there are different lines in that position, but the, the idea of that, uh, that move is to see how to uh, keep the opponent's king in the center and how to develop our pieces with the tempo. Attacking the pawn, b5. And now, queen takes on g7. The pawn structure of uh, black is destroyed. And we continue our attack in a very beautiful way, my friends. Rook f8, knight g5. Every move, every hour move is attack. It's attacking move. Queen a5. Of course, we don't want to give up our rook on c3. Bishop f3. Bishop b7. And now, my opponent wants to castle on the long side. Last chance to save the king. But rook d1. We take the control on the d5, on the d5, knight b4, and now how we continue the attack. White to move. What you play in that position? I will give you two, three minutes, and then I will continue. Knight takes only five. It's not possible. Probably you mean knight takes on e6, Oscar. Okay, Henrik also, knight takes on e6. Of course, knight takes on e6. It's not possible d takes on e6 because bishop h5 checkmate. Very nice tactic. Queen c8, bishop takes, knight takes on f8. Of course, we want an exchange and we have a completely winning position. Now it's time to take another free pawn. Knight d3. E6. That move is not possible because the queen is hanging. Castle. On the move uh, 30, my opponent castled. So it's Move 30, yes. But uh, the position is uh, lost. He takes on a 7 queen d5. And now we take another free pawn. Rook d7, bishop e3. Rook takes on f7. Check. King b7. And now you can see that the knight on d3 looks uh, good. My opponent has a b5 and c4 pawn. They're, they're protecting the king a little bit. And the most logical move in that position is a4. We want to open the position and to, to attack with our rooks because our rooks are powerful when we have open and semi open files. And now, we have a passed pawn a5. Queen a5, a6 check, king a8. You don't want to exchange the queens because when you are when you do our attack, it's not good to exchange the queens. 
queen h4. We want to checkmate. Queen d5. And now, rook e5. A wonderful end of the game. If uh, black takes the rook on a5, queen e4 check and queen e8. And my opponent resigned. That was the second game with the topic attacking the uncastled king. So remember, after he gets, uh, yes, uh, black connected their pawns, but in chess, you know, we, uh, we have to give a checkmate on the opponent's king. It's not important how many pawns he has more. It's important to give a checkmate to our opponent. So, uh, you have to focus on attacking the king. Attacking the king, and creating weaknesses, and activating all pieces. If you have any questions, I will answer your questions regarding to that game. So, if the opponent king is uncastled, so after a move uh, 8 or 10, if our king is protected and the opponent's king is in the center, we have to open files and diagonals to keep the opponent's king in the center and to activate our pieces very fast. Thank you, uh, uh, Jaquil, for your comment. Very nice attacking game. So if you don't have any questions, I will continue with the third game. Okay, the third game is with the topping, attacking the castle king. So when we do attack uh, on the castle king, we have to evaluate the position very well and to, to make sure that we have more attacking pieces than uh, our opponent has defenders. So more attacking pieces than defenders of the opponent. D4, knight f6, c5, d5, b5, Benko gambit, one of my favorite gambits. That game I played against one also very strong international master. So uh, one question about the c5, d5, uh, b5. Paul Debus asked one of bishop my bishop e7 instead of queen b6. Bishop d7 is better. Uh, Victor answered that question. So there are different lines. So in uh, in the second game, I told you we are not going to focus on the opening. We are focusing how to attack, how to create weaknesses and to attack the king. We continue with the third game. C takes on b5, a6, b takes on a6, bishop takes on a6. In Benko Gambit, one of the main plans, are to sacrifice a pawn and to attack on the queen side. If some of you play Benko Gambit, you will know. If not, now I will, I'm telling you the main idea of that opening for black. G6, E4, bishop takes on F1, knight D7, G3. Another option is H3, king G1, and King h2, g3, bishop g7, king g2, castle. This is one way, uh, of the most popular position is Benko Gambit. Our plan is to attack on the queen side. The plan for white is to push the e5 pawn. And what you should recognize in that position, the opponent's king is not well protected because there is no white squared bishop on g2. Now you see 
how I continue that game. Rookie one, rookie six, bishop a4. From theoretical point of view, a4 is the best move here for white. Queen a8, bishop g5, h6, bishop d2, rook b8, b3. And uh, that position is better for white. If some of you wants to know what's the best move for white in that position, bishop a4, h6. Very tricky move. The idea is to control the g5 square. Rook c1. Of course, my opponent wants to develop his non active. Is queen a8. I played queen a8, the best move in that position. The queen on a8 is ready to attack on the queen side and also will be very powerful on that diagonal h1, a8. Rook e2. And now, black to move. What's the best move here for black? It's your turn, guys. You have two minutes to find the best move in that position. Switch your brains on attacking mode. Don't think about defense. Think about how to attack. I'm waiting for your answers. Take your time. G5, G4, and 95. Interesting idea, John. Okay. A5. Okay. Any other suggestions? One more suggestion, and I will continue with the game. Knight h5, knight h5, knight h5 with the idea f5. Okay, that idea is interesting. Knight g4 is interesting, but the best move in that uh, position is g5, attacking the bishop, bishop d2. And now I told you that diagonal is very important. And now the one of the typical plans for black in that position is e6. We want to open that diagonal. The king, the opponent's king is on g2. It's not well protected. d takes on e6. f takes on e6. There's another option, h4, for white. Of course, we take e takes on d5, then g4, knight d5, and we the position is equal, but I think that uh, our attack is, uh, will be faster than the opponent's. So that's it. one interesting line. Anyway, my opponent played d takes on d6. D takes only six, and we have semi open file for our rook. H4, D5. Now we take we, the control of the center, and step by step, we improve our position. Controlling the center is one of the most important things because when you control the center, we will have more space. and we can create easy attack. 
knight takes on d5. We want to take on d5 with knight because our queen is on that diagonal and it's very dangerous right now. Knight e4, g4, knight f6. And uh, I told it 100% uh, I win the uh, minor piece. My opponent also um, told it he will uh, lose his minor piece. Queen c2, rook a4, and uh, my opponent played king g1. And I want a minor piece. And I have a winning position here. The best move here is rook e1, knight e4, rook e4. If I play knight e6, very tricky move, queen takes on a4. And white will win. So rook takes on a2 was the best move for me in that line. And it's, uh, I think it's equal position. But my opponent uh, didn't see that line. He played king g1. I want a piece. Bishop c3, h5. And also the knight on h2 is uh, isolated from the game. Looks very bad. Rook d1, rook e2. Remember that uh, when you have a material advantage, you have to exchange some pieces and you, it will be easy for you to win the game. Queen e2, attacking the pawn. Queen takes on a2, protecting the pawn and winning a free pawn. f3, g takes on f3, knight takes on f3. e5, you want to close the diagonal a1, h8 for the Opponent's bishop, knight takes on e5, knight takes on e5. As I said before, every exchange is good for us because we have material advantage. Queen c4, queen g5, double attack, and white has to exchange the queens. And in a few moves, we will win the game b4, c4, that move it's the best in that position because now we create a pass pawn, rook d4, and knight d5. With that beautiful tactic, we exchange one more minor piece and bishop takes on c3, bishop g7, rook c8, and zero, one. We won the game. I hope that you like that game. The topic of that game is how to attack the castled king. Remember that when you start to attack the castled king, you have to evaluate the position very well. You need more attacking pieces than defenders of the opponent. And if the, the opponent's king doesn't uh, looks, uh, if the opponent's king looks uh, well protected, you have to think how to create weaknesses around the king and then how to continue your attack. If you have any questions about that game, you can uh, write a comment, you can send a message. If there is no questions, I wait uh, about why I played through k6, Jaku asked me. So, rook a6, oh, that question, because you, you asked me that question, rook a6, uh, means that you, you never played Benko Gambit. Benko Gambit, it's very interesting uh, opening. If you're uh, intermediate players, I recommend to start learning uh, gambits and uh, don't uh, 
um, evaluate the position with uh, computer. If you just start to, to play chess, it's good to learn gambits and to learn how to attack and to not to be scared to sacrifice uh, pieces. Yes, so in Benko Gambit, Rook A6 is one of the typical ideas for Black in that position, uh, Jaku. So uh, this is one of the, the plans. The, the idea is, by the way, to attack that pawns. The idea is to attack that pawns. To play Rook A6, Rook A6, Queen A8, Rook B8, and to attack the pawns on the Queen side. But also another idea is not to attack that pawns, is to play e6 and to attack the pawn on d5. The, the, uh, the name of the gambit is Benko Gambit, uh, Siddhartha. Okay, so if you don't have any questions, I will move to the next game. I hope that you like that game. So the next game, attacking the king with an isolated pawn. There are a lot of information about uh, how to attack uh, with an isolated pawn, but uh, I will tell you the, the main things. I have uh, written that uh, plans and ideas in my computer, of course. If you want, I will. You can uh, send a message uh, to Chess Lance. You can uh, send a message to Chess Lance, and uh, we can send you the the plans and ideas uh, when you attack uh, the king. Uh, what you should do? So, uh, attacking uh, the king with an isolated pawn. If you have the isolated pawn, you have to keep more pieces on the board, and. Uh, 90, 90, uh, 99% you attack on the king side. Also, if you're with white, you have the d4 pawn isolated. So another idea is to push that isolated pawn. And the light square bishop is very important for us. So it's not good to exchange that bishop. Also, if you play against uh, the isolated pawn, it's good to exchange pieces to block that pawn and to attack the, uh, the isolated pawn because that uh, isolated pawn is weak. We have a weakness. So let's move to the game. That game I played against one uh, grandmaster from uh, George, I think. E4, C6, Harokan defense. Karkan defense, one of the favorite openings of Anatoly Karpov, 12th world chess champion, c4, knight f6, knight c3, e6. This is a theory, by the way. c takes 25, knight takes 25, a3. The idea of that move is to control the b4 square. Bishop e7, bishop d3, of course, we have to develop our minor pieces rapidly. Castle, castle, knight f6, bishop c2, with the idea of queen d3, and to attack the h7 pawn. b6, queen d3, bishop b7. And now we have to think how to activate our non-active pieces, rook e1. The idea is to control the e5 square. Also, we can jump with the rook e3, rook h3 in some moment, and d5. When you have an isolated pawn, remember that it's always possible to push that pawn. And if it takes with the pawn, you can play knight d4, and we can make that uh, bishop uh, very bad. Queen c8, 
if g6, if g6, we can play bishop h6, rook a d1, rook c8, and now h4. This is a typical move against that pawns f7, g6, h7. Bishop uh, g5, it's also an interesting move, but remember the idea. The idea is uh, when opponent has f7, g6, h7 pawn around the king, that move h4, h5, it's always very interesting and powerful. So let's go back to the game. Queen c8, knight g5. Our opponent is well protected. So if you want to attack the opponent's king, we have to create the weaknesses around the king. That's why we play knight g5, one knight g5. Bishop g5, also interesting idea. Peter said bishop g5, with the idea bishop takes on f6 and queen h7 checkmate. Bishop a6, queen e3, g6, and again our move, h4. And we have a very strong position. I played knight g5, bishop a6, that move is a mistake. If rook d8, we can play d5. To sacrifice the pawn, and then you can take the pawn h7. There is one line. I analyzed with the computer. I will show very, very quickly. It's not, it's not so important, but uh, F3 and we have a slightly better position. But only remember that every time when you have an isolated pawn, we can push that pawn and to create uh, attack. Bishop a6, queen h3. We want to attack the h7 pawn and to create the weaknesses around the opponent's king. Knight f3, rook d8, attacking our pawn. Of course, development and protecting. We don't want to give up our on d4, bishop f8. And now the most logical move in that position is to activate our last non-active piece to the game. Queen b7. I played queen g3 with the idea, bishop takes on h6, trying to create more weaknesses around the king. But there is another option here for white. Another attacking move. Can you try to find that move instead of queen g3? I'm giving you two minutes. Okay, John wants to play bishop takes on f6 instead of bishop e3. Also, I will tell you in a few minutes something when you start an attack. Ninety four, I, I see Jirka uh, says ninety four. Bishop G five. Mm. Tricks of chess, but okay. The best move in that position is to play aggressive. G four. 
amazing attacking move. After knight g5, for example, for example, we take the knight and then g5. And we start a monster attack against the opponent's king. Take a look again on the position g4. Our king is well protected. We are not scared about that move g4. Knight g5 and g5. And we destroy the pawn structure around the opponent's king. So I want to tell you something. When you start to attack the opponent's king, usually there are three pawns from the king. In uh, some lines, if there is a chance to sacrifice a minor piece for two pawns, that uh, idea is always interesting. So, minor piece for two pawns. Minor piece for two pawns, it's always interesting idea when you attack the opponent's king. Minor piece for one pawn, you have to calculate very well. But minor piece for two pawns, it's always interesting. You can write that down. John uh, says I was thinking for g4. Okay, just switch your brain to attacking mode, my friends. So let's go back to the game. Queen g3, king h8. That move is not so good. If rook a8, d5. Again, remember, when you have an isolated pawn, pushing the isolated pawn, it's always an interesting idea. He takes on d5, bishop takes on h6, and now we can play bishop f4, queen h3 with uh, attack. My opponent, uh, she played king uh, h8, queen h4, you want to take the pawn on h6, and the knight on f6 is hanging. Rook a c8, bishop g5. We, we just want to improve the position of our bishop. Bishop c4. I played knight e4. That move is not the best in that position. b3 was the tricky move for us. And after bishop f6, after Knight d5, we play bishop e4. Three pieces are pinned, and we have a winning position. Also, the position of the opponent's king, it's not good because it's not well protected. I played knight e4. Knight takes on e4. It's better knight d4. And after knight e6, queen takes on f3. Extremely strong move. And uh, that move gives a very interesting counterplay for black, but I think it's uh, not possible uh, to see that move on the board when you when you play chess. It's a very interesting idea. But my opponent, she didn't see that move. She played knight e4, bishop takes on e4, f6, and now. I took the, uh, the bishop, f takes on g5, and as you can see, white has a uh, weak uh, light squares in the king, and we have to, we're going to use that advantage. Queen h5 with the idea queen g6, queen h7, king g8, queen g6, bishop d6, check. We want to checkmate, check, 95, 1, 0. And it's not possible for our opponent to defend from that uh, checkmate. Remember that when we, uh, before we start an attack, we have to activate all pieces into the game. And when you have an isolated bomb, it's important to provoke our opponent to push one of the defending pawns 
um, uh, from uh, their king. And then it will be easy for us to attack the king. I hope that you liked uh, that example with the topic attacking the king with the isolated pole. Show the indica. That's the uh, my opponent resigned. Queen takes on f3. Queen takes on f3. Okay, tricks of chess asked me to show uh, queen takes on f3 now. The best move uh, in that uh, position is knight g4 and absolutely un uh, unclear uh, position. Knight g5, why my opponent, why she resigned? Because I want a checkmate. It's not possible for you to defend the h7 square. If you take the knight, Queen h5, checkmate. So after two moves, white will, uh, uh, black will be a checkmate. The black skin will be a checkmate. So that's why my opponent she resigned. Any other questions, my friends, about that game? I will give you one minute. If you don't have any questions, I will continue with the next game, with the last game, which I prepared for you. Is it possible, uh, tricks of chess, is it possible to advance the F pawn in order to start the attack? Of course, when you have an isolated pawn, when you have an isolated pawn, it's possible to prepare F4, F5. That idea, it's very typical when you have an isolated pawn. Uh, one of the the masters in that position, one of the grandmasters who played that idea F4, F5, it's uh, Botvinnik, one of the world chess champions. You can find, you can search for uh, his games and try to find uh, some games when we, when he's with uh, isolated pawn. And I think that there is one famous position with the idea F4, F5, then uh, some uh, tactic knight takes uh, knight takes on f7. I think uh, if I remember well, this attack reminds me of Mikhail Suba. Mikhail Suba, uh, John. Uh, I have uh, his books and uh, bad games, which I prepared for you, is uh, from uh, my own experience. It's not uh, games from uh, some other players. These games are only from my experience. So let's go, uh, let's move to the next game. The topic is opposite side casting attack. Uh, you can see a lot of information in internet uh, about how to attack uh, with uh, opposite side casting attack, but in a very simple explanation, when there is a, when uh, we um, castle on the king side, for example, our opponent castle on the queen side, uh, the simple plan for both sides is to attack the enemy king, and uh, the best way to attack is pushing uh, the pawns, pushing the pawns against the opponent's king and try to destroy the protection of the king. The protection of the king usually is the pawn, so our pawns wants to destroy the pawns of the opponent. Also, another interesting idea is to sacrifice a piece from the opponent's king 
in order to open files and diagonals and to create the attack. Similar attacking style. Okay, perfect. So, Michael Suba uh, play uh, my style. That's good for him. So, let's start with the fifth game. E4, D6, D4, Knight F6, Knight C3, G6, Bishop E3, C6. One of the ideas for black is to play B5, but uh, that move is not dangerous for us. I played that game against also one very strong international master from Bulgaria. H3, profil axis. We prevent the move knight g4 and bishop g4. Knight d7, knight f3, c7, bishop d3. Uh, we received some kind of uh, tutorial position. You know, at the beginning of the game, we have to control the center and rapidly to develop our minor pieces. If you want to be a successful chess players, we have to follow that uh, basic strategy principles in uh, every stage of the game. B5. If before, knight e2, knight g3. That move, it's not dangerous. Queen d2. And now, with that move, we have two options. To castle on the king side or to castle on the queen side. Bishop b7. Now, castle. We finish our development and we are ready for attack. My opponent play that move a6. Very big strategic mistake. Black are late with their development and their king is in the center. What we should do after a6? I'm waiting you for your uh, answers. So remember the first game which I showed you about 40 minutes ago. The opponent's king is in the center. What's the best move here for white? Okay, we have to open the center, of course, of course, of course, my friends, we have to open the center and E5 is the best move. I told you that every time when we have a chance to sacrifice a pawn in order to take the initiative and to activate more pieces into the game, we must do it. Knight e5. My opponent accepts the sacrifice, and you can see that uh, middle game position. And black king is in the center, and the opponent's king also looks very bad because the opponent's king is a front of the pawns, and uh, she can be under attack. And uh, what I told you, if you want to attack the opponent, we must activate all pieces. Bishop f4, that move it's better. Knight, uh, queen d4, now, why that move is better? Because there is some tricky line. Uh, if uh, rook f1, if bishop g7, Bishop g7, with the idea castle on the king side, we have a very strong move, bishop on h6. That's why rook f1 is a better move. And after queen c7, then bishop f4. I played bishop f4, and then my opponent had a chance to play queen c5, and after rook e1, 
Bishop G7. And now Black King Castle on the king side. That's why that move is better than that move. But it's hard to see everything on the chessboard when you when you play chess. It's easy when you use a computer, but it's not easy when uh, you don't have a uh, engine next to you. Queen d4, rookie one. And now, castle on the long side. That move is a self destruction for black because their king is not well protected about the pawn uh, by the pawns. It's better uh, for black to play bishop g7, rook a d1, to, uh, to, to sacrifice a pawn. And uh, we have a better position, but uh, black uh, still have a chance to save uh, the game. But after castle on the long side, you can see that uh, their king is not protected. And now we continue rook a d1. We activate our last piece into the game. Knight d7. What the... Uh, Bishop e3. I see one uh, question from Alex Delgado. Do you recommend to create what techniques do you recommend to create weaknesses? Very simple technique. Uh, very simple technique to create weaknesses. First, you have to evaluate the position very well. To find the weak, uh, that uh, weakness and then to attack the weakness. If there is no weaknesses on the board, you have to think how to create the weaknesses. It's better, it's better to create weakness uh, from the opponent's king because we want to give a checkmate. That's the final purpose of the game. So let's go back to the game. Uh, Alex, if you have uh, any other questions, uh, you can ask me uh, later by the end of the webinar. Bishop e3, queen d6, knight e4. Simple move. We want to centralize our knight. And we centralize our knight with the tempo. The best mm, option is to play our move with the tempo. Queen d5, b3. <clears throat> That simple move, it's uh, very interesting with the idea c4 and to destroy the, the pawn structure from the opponent's king. Hmm. Computer says some other lines, but b3 is still one of the top moves and one of the strongest human moves. b3, bishop g7, c4, double attack. Queen h5, knight g3, queen h4. And now uh, black queen looks a little bit isolated from the game. And I don't see any counterplay for uh, black on the king side. Then, of course, if you want to destroy the protection of the king, we have to exchange some pawns from that king. C takes on b5, a takes on b5, bishop takes on b5. Remember that if you want to be a very good attacking players, you have to be ready to sacrifice and to calculate a lot of variations and to calculate, uh, calculate uh, very well. If uh, black accept the sacrifice, queen a5 with the idea rook c1, Bishop c6, queen takes on b5. And after a few moves, we'll uh, give a checkmate. Or we'll have a piece up. Knight e5, queen c2, rook d1, rook takes on d1, rook d8. And now there. I will give you 
few options and you say me what's the best move for white to take the rook on uh, d8 to play bishop f1 or to play rook c1 so rook d8 bishop uh, f1 or rook c1 what's the best move here for white I told you some principles before, and let's see who knows that principles and who remember that principles. I'll give you 30 seconds more. So, what I told you before, when you attack the opponent, it's not good to exchange pieces. Computer says through takes on d8, but that move it's not logical. It's not good. Rook c1, the best move in that position. You want to have more pieces for the attack. Rook d5, attacking the bishop, a4, protecting the bishop and moving our fast pawn forward. King d7. Now my opponent wants to take the bishop, bishop c4, knight c4, b takes on c4, rook d4, bishop takes, bishop takes, uh, we want an exchange and we have a complete winning position. Now our opponent wants to take the knight on g3, queen b3, protecting the knight and attacking the bishop on b7. Bishop c8, queen f3, attacking the pawn, knight e2. The idea of that move is to play rook d1 and to take the bishop. Bishop e5, rook d1, check, and now Queen e3. You want to take the bishop on e5 and to play queen a7. Uh, remember that uh, when you have a winning position, it's uh, very important to use the right technique to finish the game. If you don't have that technique, uh, there's a chance your opponent to defend the position and uh, it will be hard for you to win the game. Queen e4, of course, when you attack, it's not good to exchange pieces. Check, check, and after king uh, c8 or king b8, rook d8 and checkmate. In a few moves, next king will be checkmated. So, my in that position, my opponent resigned, 1-0, that was the fifth game with the topic attacking the uncastled king and uh, uh, attacking the uh, opposite side classic attack, by the way. It was two topics in, in one game, by the way. I hope that you like that game. If you have any questions, you can ask me. And after that, I will tell you, I will show you uh, very important chess principles. But first, let's see if you have any questions regarding to, to that game. The, uh, the sacrifice. Uh, sacrifice, you mean uh, sacrifice of the bishop 
when I played bishop b5, that sacrifice or uh, that sacrifice e5, sacrificing the pawn. Peter asked on the chat, S sacrificing the pawn or sacrificing bishop b5? Which, uh, which move you mean? Sacrificing a pawn, I think it's clear that sacrifice to open the position and to attack the opponent's king. Sacrificing a bishop. Uh, sacrificing a bishop, that uh, move, uh, if you switch, I told you, if you switch your brain on attacking mode, you have to be ready to calculate, to sacrifice, to, um, to think how to create some... Uh, uh, checkmate in a few moves. So, if you watch uh, some, it's good. That move is good because uh, I calculated that move uh, very well. That's what I told you that it's always good to sacrifice uh, peace if you uh, have a chance to create attack against the opponent's king. Just you, you, you have to, uh, you need uh, good calculation skills and, and a good understanding of the game. If you, if you see, for example, uh, 200 uh, attacking games, you will see that move bishop uh, b5. So, guys, um, now it's time to show you some attacking principles. Give me a, uh, a few seconds to, to switch the screen. Uh, can you see the the principles right now, my friends? If you can see uh, the PowerPoint basic chess principles in the opening, you can say yes on chat. And I will show you some interesting principles and uh, we will finish our webinar. Okay, perfect. You, you can see it. Perfect. Okay, guys. So, basic chess principles in the opening. In the opening, in the opening, these are the first, uh, first uh, uh, eight, uh, ten moves. So, in the opening, you have to fight for the center, rapidly development of all minor pieces, protecting the king, usually with the castle. And it's not good to move the same piece twice during the opening. Also, it's not good to trade active piece for a passive piece. And uh, it's not good to develop uh, heavy pieces before the minor pieces in the opening. The first eight or 10 moves. Usually, this is the, um, this is the opening. First eight or 10 moves. Next uh, slideshow. It's not good to open the position if you are late in development. We need more active pieces and then to open the position. Also, uh, if we castle on the king side, we will receive a more safe position than uh, uh, casting on the queen side. If you want to have a very if you want to play a very aggressive game, you castle on the queen side, and the game will be very aggressive. Also, it's good to uh, prevent the opponent from casting, and then it, it will be easy for us to attacking the king. It's good to have uh, more space. 
also when we push our pawns forward, we have uh, more space and we control the center. And one of the ideas is to uh, push our pawns in the center, one of the basic principles. Another interesting principle in the middle game, so basic chess principles in the middle game. When you have a material advantage, we should exchange pieces. You saw, uh, in I think in the second game, you saw that uh, we followed that uh, principle. When the opponent has active pieces, we try to remove them from uh, what, uh, wherever they are, or to exchange them. So if the open has a good piece, we don't want to see that piece on that square. Also, we always exchange our weak or unactive piece for active piece uh, of the opponent. When we put pawns in the color of the enemy bishop, we make him weaker. So if you want our bishop to be strong, we need more squares. If the opponent's bishop doesn't have more squares uh, where uh, he can play with that bishop, so the bishop is bad. And if there is a chance to sacrifice a pawn and to develop our pieces faster and to take the initiative, we must do it. We saw that example in the second game. Basic uh, chess principles in the middle games. Uh, so. Uh, when you start an attack, it's not good to exchange pieces, especially the queens. We have when we start an attack, we have to include all pieces, and uh, when we are under attack, we have to exchange pieces, and the strength of the opponent's attack will decrease. So, when you attack, it's not good to exchange pieces. When you are under attack, we have to exchange pieces. And uh, in the middle game, our king must be protected. The best defenders are the pawns and the knights. And uh, the last slide show, uh, which I want to show, is uh, how to evaluate the position. We have to, when we evaluate the position, first we have to see how is the material balance, uh, how are the kings, are they safe or no? Piece activity, active pieces, uh, is there any active pieces or non-active pieces? Uh, how is the pawn structure? Is there any weak pawns on the board? And how is the, uh, the position without queens? So uh, these are the uh, slideshows which I prepared for you. So uh, Miguel asked to send the link with that presentation. Uh, I cannot send the link, but you can send the email to support at chesslands.com. And uh, my colleagues, they will send you that, uh, uh, that's uh, principles. So if you have any questions regarding to the lesson, if you want some information, ask on support at chesslands.com so that was the web, uh, the webinar from me i hope that you like that session and uh, let's see uh, victor what you will say to you and i hope that i will see you again so victor it's your turn Nikolai, I'm back, so please stop screen sharing now. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for conducting such a long webinar. I'm sure this information was uh, very helpful uh, for our students. Um, and of course, uh, even some positions uh, were really uh, helpful for me because I wasn't familiar about what to play in this or that position, wasn't sure. So I'm sure our students uh, enjoyed the webinar and uh, guys, uh, I would like you to remember that today uh, and actually not today, but uh, you can uh, claim your free class with Nikolai. So 
Let me now sh share the screen and explain it. So, for example, if you look at this position, this is where our stream was. Uh-huh. Okay, I don't think you see it. Just once, uh, one second. Uh -huh. For example, on this web page, uh, you can click here, click here to sign up for your lesson, and let's look what happens. So you may choose your teacher. Uh, Fide Master Nikolai Yordanov and order a free um, free class uh, schedule and successfully uh, have a class with Nikolai where he can probably explain something new to you. So use this link and um, if you uh, no, actually you can also order a one hour class with Nikolai. Let, let me show how to do it. This is our main page, chesslands.com. You click here, coaches. Oh, for example, this is well, here, you click coaches. This is uh, the list of our coaches. You find Nikolai, it's here. Then you can book a test lesson, which is free, but it's only a 20 minutes class. Or you can book a one hour class. So you click here, book a lesson. And then you choose uh, day, time, and uh, schedule. I also want you to remember that if you book a one-hour class with Fido Master Nikolai Yordanov today, you will get a complimentary gift card for twenty dollars, and you can uh, this card can be redeemed at thechessworld.com. Uh, to get this card, you just simply have to book a one-hour class and send an email to us at uh, support at chestlands.com. Okay, guys, I'm uh, sure you enjoyed the webinar. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Uh, we will uh, provide you with the recording of this webinar. So... I think everyone enjoyed and if there are no questions then let's finish if you have some questions left you can email us and uh, uh, we will announce another workshop with our other coach next week thank you for coming